Hi everyone, my name is Tia Yong. I'm a clinical psychologist with Annabelle Psychology and Annabelle Kids. So today I will be reacting to two videos. The first video is uh, 2019's Joker by Joaquin uh, Phoenix, a uh, very, very talented actor. And the second video will be a K drama uh, called Fix You or uh, Soul Mechanic. He's crying at the same time as laughing. <laughs> so much pain in that laughter. So here you see uh, Arthur or the Joker uh, with his uh, therapist or possibly the case manager uh, in her room. Um, I think a few seconds ago you saw that the, the room was really really cluttered with stacks of files uh, everywhere, pieces of paper around uh, and yeah, and, and the, the therapist wasn't uh, saying anything to, 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 to him, just kind of giving him that space to, to express uh, himself. So, I mean, the, the two parts here, um, firstly, in a, in a therapist setting, we, we, we try to keep the place uh, neat, uh, uh, conducive, uh, almost like a, like, like a blank slate in a sense, yeah, so that the, the, the room wouldn't add any more uh, stress or, or affect uh, our client or the patient uh, in any way uh, negatively. Uh, we probably wouldn't pick a location that is so cluttered and, and so uh, dark because the, the mood of the, of the setting and the location might uh, add more stress to, to the, the, the pain or, or, the, or the conflicted feelings that is uh, already going through. Um, but definitely, I, I thought, <clears throat> I thought the, the, the therapist or the uh, case manager is trying to give him that space to, to, to express himself without uh, asserting her thoughts, without uh, uh, giving any judgments uh, on him. So let's, let's continue to watch this video and see what happens. Arthur, last time I asked you to bring your journal with you for these appointments. Can I see it? I'm just going to pause here uh, again. Um, her tone um, revealed some dissatisfaction. She doesn't seem to be really feeling what he's going through. I mean, just a few seconds before this, he was, he was laughing and it was a very pained uh, kind of laughter. And she didn't really um, kind of identify or empathize with that. But instead, she's kind of sidetrack to talk about the, the, the journal and, and the homework that he's supposed to have uh, done for her. Um, she appears to be uh, rather demanding and persistent in, 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 in this and at this point watching this I'm, I'm wondering um, this demand what kind of effect it would have upon him and whether her, her stance, her, this, this, this approach, whether it would I guess remind him of any uh, early childhood uh, figures or, or figures of authority uh, in his life and, and, and how that could bring out some um, kind of emotions uh, in him. So let's, let's watch on to see what else happens. How does it feel to have to come here? Does it help to have someone to talk to? Okay, I'm going I'm to pause here uh, again. You can kind of see her jumping from one thing to, to another. Uh, she, she looked stressed when she saw uh, the contents of the, of the, of the diary, uh, that they didn't look like uh, jokes. And I think she wanted to communicate that point uh, to him. <clears throat> um, but she wasn't actually making an interpretation of, of, of that. She didn't hear him she didn't technically hear him when, when, when he said that, you know, that these are jokes. Yeah. So by right, a therapist should have made that link that to him, these are jokes, but in reality, these are, it, it felt like a traumatic uh, reflections. Uh, that she needs to make that link that how these traumatic reflections to him, uh, they, are, they are jokes, uh, is framing it as jokes, a way for him to, 
to, to, to kind of make sense of the situation? Does it uh, make it feel less painful uh, for him? Is, is that like a defense uh, kind of mechanism? And she, she didn't make that interpretation. Um, and she glossed over that it, it, it looked like a suicidal uh, ideation that he had Arthur, the Joker, had hoped that his death would make more, uh, have more meaning uh, than, than his life. She glossed over uh, that, that point and then started to reflect about whether therapy has been uh, useful for him. Maybe this is the therapist's own uh, guilt uh, uh, talking here, that she felt bad that in spite of her, her therapy and her interventions, that he is still having these uh, suicidal ideations. And, and she is questioning herself, uh, is therapy helping? And she's kind of projecting that guilt uh, onto, on, onto Arthur, onto, onto the Joker. Yeah, I think what, what made the, the movie uh, Joker really stand out was that it, it helps you to identify uh, and empathize with the, the, the trauma and the pain that he's been through and it helps us to understand how hard it is to, to cope, how hard it is to, to, to regulate uh, when, 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 when no one around you are helping, when people are uh, invalidating you. Um, so if anything, you know, this clip is a, a, classic, of exam a classic example of what not uh, to do when, when someone comes to you uh, for help. Right, now I'm going to watch the next uh, video. Uh, it's a, a K-drama called Fix You. I've, I've not watched this uh, series before, so I, I'm not really clear about the context, but let's just see how this goes. Okay, I'm going to pause here a little bit just to reflect on this uh, setting. So this is supposed to be a therapy uh, setting. I have personally never seen such a therapy setting uh, before. Uh, just now in, in the scene, you can see a whole team of uh, guys and uh, girls in uh, lab coats seated, almost watching this like uh, some kind of a play or drama performance. Um, and then there was another person just at the bottom of the stage, kind of directing uh, this lady uh, about what she has to say. It appears that maybe this lady is, a, is an actress uh, of, of some sort and she's, she's pretty harsh and pretty critical uh, with, 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 with the man seated uh, across uh, from her. Yeah, and I wonder what kind of uh, emotions she's, she's trying to uh, elicit from him. It seemed like the, the director is trying to play the role of a therapist and he is, his intention perhaps is to try to get uh, the man here to, to assert uh, himself, to speak up against uh, the lady. Reflecting on you know, what, what just happened, you, you see uh, the main character, he is expressing himself, all that, all that rage, all that anger, uh, all that hurt and pain. It's, 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 it's all coming up, it's all surfacing and, and he's experience, like expressing it verbally um, to, to, to the father uh, that is that's played by, by, the, by the lady across uh, from him. Perhaps that's the uh, intention of this whole uh, setup to have him verbalize uh, these uh, emotions rather than to kind of lock them and, and contain them uh, inside uh, him. Sometimes these uh, emotional expressions uh, can be uh, quite uh, uh, cathartic uh, for, for, for the client, for the, for the patient. Um, and in that regard, it, it can be quite uh, liberating uh, saying these uh, words. Uh, because a lot of times these uh, emotional hurts and pains it's, it's just kind of locked away somewhere in your memory. It's a, it's a very abstract uh, and, and sticky uh, kind of feeling. It's, it's hard to shake it off, even though you, 
you might have other corrective uh, experiences, positive experiences uh, after that. And being able to verbalize it, to make sense of it, uh, that can be uh, quite uh, therapeutic. Um, and then towards the end, you kind of see um, the lady uh, going over to, to hug him and to console him, assuming that the lady is still uh, staying in character and playing the role of, a, of, of, a, of the dad. Perhaps this was a bit of uh, trying to do a rescripting, meaning they're trying to change the ending of how he experiences uh, that, uh, helping him to, to find a, an alternative uh, conclusion to, to this experience. That after he feels this pain, he expresses it out, he, he clearly tells that how he feels, and then now that dad understands how he feels, that dad comes over to provide him uh, that warmth and, and, and comfort and, and, and to soothe him. Sometimes by having these uh, associations, these emotional associations, it can help him to, to find safety um, and, 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 and comfort even, even, even through uh, that uh, pain as well. Um, possibly help him to experience these childhood memories uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a different way. Uh, and that's why we, we call it uh, rescripting, trying to change the ending. Uh, let's, let's bring this to a, a real life uh, therapy practice. In real life, uh, we, we, we don't do this. I just want to uh, just uh, clarify, definitely uh, not in, in, in this kind of big group setting where, where people are watching you because it's hard to feel safe when, when, when everyone is staring at you and, and waiting for, for you to give a good performance. Um, but that said, I think the intention is, is good. The intention is to make his memories uh, as concrete as possible and having uh, the other person uh, say it out, uh, act it out in front of you, uh, it, it can help to uh, just surface these uh, emotions um, better so that, he can, so that he can express it and, and, and make sense of it and uh, process all these uh, locked away uh, memories. Um, but we, we can't say for sure how the dad had spoken to him so it, it probably won't, won't be very helpful to use a, an actor or, or actress uh, to do it what might be more helpful, uh, what we actually do in, in real life is to have uh, the client talk about those memories. Yeah, it, it can be talking about it as if recalling it, or it can be the, 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 the client himself going back in time into uh, the, the shoes of like, you know, a five-year-old boy or six-year-old boy, and then just narrating it as it is happening. Yeah. So that would probably be a more accurate uh, representation rather than relying it on, on, on an actor or actress. And it also allows you to, to get a better, better understanding of how, how it was framed uh, for him. And sometimes it can be quite different if you were to ask the, the, the actual parent like what happened on that day. It can be a very, very different uh, story. But nonetheless, it, it is true because it's all about the subjective uh, experience. Uh, of, of those uh, memories. Um, and what is also uh, quite helpful in, in real life is that after all this uh, emotional processing, we do want to actually uh, help to shape the interpersonal interactions between the, 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 the client and that uh, parent figure uh, as well. So what would really be the most powerful is if the, the client is actually able to, to say it to, to dad in, 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 in real life. So possibly the, the first step is kind of through uh, the imagery and uh, the recreating of the story uh, kind of in, in, in his mind uh, and then being able to say the right words. Uh, that's like a step one and then step two, uh, 
being able to say it uh, in real life to to the to the to the parent uh, figure, then I think that is probably uh, the most uh, impactful. Uh, usually, to soften the ground a bit, we would also have individual sessions uh, with the parent as well uh, to help the parent to also formulate like what's happening, why why is the child uh, presenting with all these uh, emotional difficulties or behavioral. Uh, difficulty so that we can all come to a common understanding. Uh, we will also help the parent to anticipate what might come up in, in that session so that we can also um, help to shape the parent's uh, reactions as well. For example, it wouldn't be helpful if uh, the, the child says, expresses himself to the parent and then the parent does the exact same thing as they used to do in the past, which is to invalidate and dismiss or worse still, uh, criticize and and, 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 and so that, that will only be just uh, re-traumatizing uh, for, for, the, for the child. Yeah, so I, I hope this uh, sharing and reacting gives us a, a better idea about what happens in a, in a real life uh, therapy setting. So even though uh, it's, it's really nice and sensational and, and, and it, it feels very uh, kind of heartfelt when, when watching the K-drama, um, but it's also important to, to realize that in reality, we need to maintain confidentiality, need to maintain uh, safety uh, and to be able to hold the, the client's uh, emotions. Yeah, and therapy is not just a, a one-time uh, thing. It's not just like we do one play and then oh, everything is all nice and dandy and sunshine and flowers uh, after that. that it's, it's really a lot of the uh, repeated uh, exposures and, and, and rescripting that slowly uh, the emotions uh, shift and the relationships shift. All right, thank you. Hi, what's up? I'm Julia. I'm a clinical psychologist at Annabelle Psychology. Emotions can't be controlled, Lucifer. What? That was my entire job. My job is to help you understand your emotions. I can help you become aware of what it is you're feeling. Or trying to avoid feeling. That sounds about right. I think the therapist, what she said, makes sense. Yeah, I think it also depends on the orientation of the therapist. But most psychologists would probably tell you um, that's really... We are not controlling our emotions, we are trying to manage them. And to manage our emotions, there are a lot of things that we can do. The first thing I think is to understand where they are coming from. And emotions, evolutionarily speaking, there are, there are functions to it. Why, why, why it's happening, why we are feeling certain ways, and understanding it is the beginning. Yeah. And then learning to manage it based on our understanding that has a more sustainable outcome as opposed to what Lucifer is looking, he's trying to find a quick fix and that, that's, that's not how it works. Have you ever had a client tell you, well, I want this to happen, like, do it, it's your job? Do it's my job, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. How would you uh, manage that kind of situation? I think, I think at that point when, when they say that, it's usually when they're very frustrated already. Some things are not working, so it makes me reflect what in the relationship, what in the therapy is not working with them, for them, and also allow them to be collaborative in the process of understanding what is not working here. Yeah, this anger is coming from somewhere. Again, using the emotions to, to work during the therapy as opposed to reacting to it and like, oh, you know, this is this, and kind of finger pointing. That's not how, how, how we do things. Okay, next we have the Sean from The Good Doctor. That you agreed to meet with? Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. It's nice to meet you. Hi. Dr. Glassman thought it would be a good idea for us to meet before our first in-home session, just to make sure you're comfortable. I am not comfortable. Yeah, I think it's quite common to, f to feel the way Sean was feeling then. He was anxious, nervous, and I think for a lot of healthcare professionals, the idea of getting help, ironically, is, is uncomfortable for healthcare professionals. Yeah, in that capacity, it could be partly that. And also maybe he's not familiar with the situation, which is very common for individuals with autism as well. Need to change, need to adapt, meeting new people. So that might be something that he was feeling too. Him running away, also a very typical response, probably trying to alleviate, relieve his anxiety. At the same time, Facing a therapist might probably help him, which is probably why that old guy is trying to convince him to see a therapist. 
I didn't watch this, so I don't have the full context. But it looks like Sean was panicking and it's, it's normal for people to feel apprehensive and nervous. In fact, usually when I see my patient, in fact, if, it's, if it's the first time I see them, I would make sure to ask them how they feel about being here today. Uh, 9 out of 10 would say apprehensive, nervous, anxious. And how would you try to uh, alleviate their apprehension, nervousness, anxiety? We have a really amazing view here, a lot of green. So show them around. Have you been here before? Have you eaten? Was it difficult to come to, uh, to the clinic today and stuff like that? Yeah. It usually makes them feel a bit more relaxed. Then we go into the stuff. I hope that was insightful. Tell us what you think about it. And if there's anything else you want us to react to, please feel free to leave in the comments below. Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie. I'm a clinical psychologist from Annabelle Psychology and Annabelle Kids. And today I'll be reacting to some therapy scenes. And okay, I think this is her first moment of meeting a therapist. Um, And uh, I guess a little bit of context that I remember from watching this myself uh, is that uh, she had gotten in quite serious trouble from a previous school so they had sent her here but I guess with mandatory um, therapy sessions and this is the first session of the therapist trying to convince her that therapy could be helpful for her. And you can see from uh, just I guess her demeanor that she's quite maybe guarded or this, this could be just her way of um, coping generally. Uh, quite defensive, quite... Um, not revealing much uh, emotion at all um, to the therapist in the first session. Yeah. And here, she requested to go to the powder room, so like the toilet. And you can see from her eyes that she's just looking to escape this place. And she goes for it. And yeah, and then she does eventually escape um, and to just right under the principal's nose as well. She wasn't noticing and uh, Wednesday makes the escape from her therapy session. Okay, yeah, just, just this scene alone. I think I would say some of my clients are like, not, not to the extent of uh, escaping from therapy, um, but being quite guarded uh, to, to come to sessions and to attend sessions. Uh, especially those who may not feel like they need therapy. Maybe they're here because, uh, let's say, teachers want them to come or parents want them to come. Um, and oftentimes, I think a big part of how therapy works require the, the, the client themselves to have at least some motivation or they feel like they, they need this or they want this before it can really work. Um, and I, I don't yet know what happens after this um, episode, um, but with uh, Wednesday, you can see that within this session itself that uh, she, with, of course, within the first interaction or so, she's not so keen um, and I think she's still quite adamant that she doesn't need therapy and she didn't do anything wrong to require therapy. Um, from her point of view, she's pro protective of um, her, her family member, that's why she did what she did in the previous school. Yeah, I think uh, maybe, I don't know, like a takeaway from this would be that uh, people do need to be ready uh, psychologically and in terms of like their, their headspace, um, where they are in life before they feel that they would be um, able to receive from therapy and I think that's um, that's, that's what's happening here with Wednesday. Okay, so now this is a, I guess it's a collection of scenes from Good Will Hunting, the movie. And this is a scene with the, I guess one of the first therapists that he's met. And at this point, uh, he, he throws a quite a offhanded comment about how um, the, if, if the therapy found it hard to hide the fact that he's gay. Um, just a random comment to throw things off. Um, yeah, so with, with uh, Will, um, this these different scenes that we've just talked about, uh, it's also a little bit similar to Wednesday. Uh, I, I, I think again, it's a situation where he's mandated to attend therapy um, given the context. Uh, I think there was some uh, crime that he was convicted of and I think the, the past few scenes that we've talked about uh, is Will um, needing to attend therapy because he had committed a crime and um, on his behalf, his professor had tried to uh, ask for a lesser punishment and, and part of that was the mandatory uh, treatment uh, through therapy um, given all his different I think past childhood abusive situations as well. Um, but as we, we have seen, uh, he's not very keen, he's not very cooperative, um, even going to the extent to just um, agitating and aggravating the situation, um, even making fun of the therapist as well. Uh, well, I would say personally, I don't think I have had um, such outwardly uh, abrasive cli uh, clients in this way. They don't uh, agitate me like that. Uh, but definitely in the aspect of not being um, cooperative. Um, 
well, we, we try to see our clients in, in, a, in a better light, right? I mean, everyone's trying their best. Um, and even if they, on the outside, appear that they are not cooperative, we will come from a perspective of uh, they, they are doing the best that they can. So them being here, even if it's just sitting in a room, not sharing much, um, it, it has already taken a lot out of them um, to even step into the room, to be in this place with, I guess, a stranger within the first or second session. Um, you would imagine also sometimes when we have uh, different difficult childhood experiences or even ongoing life experiences that it's not easy to just uh, share with, with uh, people around us, much less someone who's in this position, you know, you know, taking a notepad or, or just an iPad to just write down things. Uh, I, would, I would say that being in that position is quite intimidating sometimes, um, apart from the willingness and even the idea of, oh, what would this person do with this information? whether the person would judge me, whether the person would think of me weird, um, even if it's a stranger. So I think perhaps for, for Will in, in these different situations, he's uh, perhaps m maybe firstly not thinking that he needs it. Secondly, it's also um, sort of like a testing behavior to see whether how far I can push these people, whether they will continue to stay here for me, whether they'll continue to pursue me uh, as a client or as someone who needs help uh, if, if they care enough at all. Um, I, I think sometimes clients might, might do certain of such behaviours, uh, not, not intentionally, uh, not purposely, but more of a uh, kind of like a part of their presentation, uh, while the underlying, if you're able to kind of push through with that and stay with the client, the underlying uh, perhaps like a, a indication could be just a, a cry for help or just a cry for attention, not in a bad way, but a cry for attention whereby they, they are hoping that, you know, their, at least their therapist would stay there and stick with them. Um, being willing to hear them out such that, uh, that they, they won't be, they, they won't be dismissed, they won't be invalidated, but someone who is able to uh, act differently uh, compared to the rest of the people in their lives. I uh, hope those were interesting insights from a perspective of a therapist myself and let us know if you have any other therapy scenes that you'd like us to react to. See you!